everyone, welcome to my channel. Check this out. This is the V-Copter. You know, I've had this for quite a while and I've never reviewed it. Well, this was announced way back in December 2019 by Zero Zero Robotics and I bought it in December 2019 and it shipped to me in October of 2021. So that was an awfully long wait time. Now, there's a reason I haven't reviewed this since I've had it since October, and I'm going to tell you my reasons at the end of this review, so stay tuned for that. But right now, you know, the V-Copter is pretty cool, and it's got some interesting specs to it, which I'm going to put up here. You know, the most important spec to take note of is it only has two motors, so it's a bicopter. If it had one motor, I guess we'd call it a helicopter. So by only having two motors, you get a longer flight time. And it is true, in my tests with this drone, the flight time is quite long. And also with only two motors, I will tell you, this is a very quiet drone. I think it's almost as quiet, if not quieter, than all the mini drones on the market. It's very quiet. So you can see from the specs up here, it can shoot 4K video at 30 frames per second. It does have a tracking feature to follow you around. It does have obstacle detection, I wouldn't really call it obstacle avoidance, it's obstacle detection. Uh, obstacle avoidance usually means that there's an obstacle, I will avoid it and go around it. This is more like there's an obstacle, I'm just gonna stop. Between the controller and the drone, they are using the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum of communication and the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is really good for long distance and range and penetration. I did find in my test, it does have good penetration. As for range, if you watch other YouTube reviewers, they didn't get very much range. So I can't really tell you, I did a small range test in this video you're gonna see. And since it only has two motors, it has a wind resistance of class five. So class five is pretty good for most drones. All right, so how about we get into my review of this little baby so uh check this out all right v-copter can't take off no satellite warning weak gps takes a while to get gps signal on this baby all right i'm out here with the v-copter and the first thing i notice is that it takes quite a while to get gps satellites so right now it's been sitting there for a little while and it says can't take off and it still says I don't have enough GPS satellites to take off. I am in a place here with the sky open. There's this little skinny metal pole that might be blocking some satellites and a tree. <laughs> but other than that, it's wide open. It should get the satellites pretty quick. So it's a little slow on that way. Yay, we're up to seven satellites now. It's still not enough to take off. Oh my God, this thing is ridiculously slow at getting satellites. What kind of technology are they using in this thing? All right, I took the drone from over there and I moved it to over here. So uh, it would get no tree uh, away from the skinny pole. It's got some trees back there, but you can kind of see through them. And uh, what am I up to for satellites? Oh, look at this. Look at this. It says takeoff. Oh my God. Now, if you look at my phone screen, it's kind of dull out here. So I've already changed the exposure value. It was at zero and using the right little uh, dial here, I can put it up. So it's not smart enough to brighten itself for days like today. So I'm brightening up to, oh, I might over brighten it. I'm going to put it at plus seven to start with. There we go. It's at plus seven. And uh, my satellites are going in and out. I'm at seven again. It says I can take off though. Oh no, I can't take off now. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Now the GPS satellite's gone away. This thing must not work well for a lot of people. I cannot believe this drone. Drop back to seven satellites. It's gotta go at least to eight to go take off. It's really bad with the GPS signal. I don't know what the problem is. All right, start these motors up. There we go. And if the GPS uh, keeps on working, it will stay still in the air. Take it on up. It's very quiet, I will say that. All right, so here I am right here. The drone is right there. What I'm noticing already is it thinks there's obstacles everywhere, even when I put it up in the air. So I've left the obstacle avoidance on and it, it sometimes just doesn't move anywhere. So I'm gonna leave it on just for this test. Uh, right now you can see what the video looks like. This is 4K 30. 
Uh, this would be the video from this here camera. That's the highest you can get it. So let's take it up and fly it around. Let's go up. So now it says on my screen, on my phone, it says, warning, you have reached the max flight altitude. Wait for the GPS signal to be normal. So once again, I've gone down to six satellites. So I'm holding it up there and hopefully it gets more satellites. But here, let me just fly it around anyways at that height. So here's a few things I can tell you already. Uh, you can see if you leave the obstacle avoidance on, it gets really confused. It starts bouncing in the air like that. It doesn't have a clue what to do. And uh, yeah, so you really want to turn that avoidance off. Other than that, the only positive I can say with it right now is it's, it's pretty quiet for a drone. It's pretty quiet. I'm going to turn the obstacle avoidance off. So in my menu, if my phone record is working, I'll go here. And you just go down to obstacle avoidance and I'll turn you off. Are you sure? Yes, turn off. I'll turn you on later. I like it better with the obstacle avoidance off. Oh yeah, much better, much better. Let's see what the active track is like on here. I'm going to put an active track over here on the left. It says manual mode. I'll click on that. Go to manual mode. I want Omni follow. So here we go. Uh, please click on target. That would be me. The big go. Altitude too, too low, I thought as much. Okay, so let's bring it up. There we go. It says you can follow the truck, the Jeep, or me. So I'm going to pick me. Altitude is too low. How high do you want this thing to go? Okay, so we're up there now. Hit go. There we go. Start. Three, two, one. So this drone should now follow me. So let me try. I'm going to walk by my Jeep here. And let's see if it follows me. Yeah, it's following me. I'll come over here on the road. You know, I stand out. It's black. It's still there. Make sure it's following me and not just sitting there in the air. Yeah, it's following me. That's good. And does it have the ability if I walk towards it, will it go backwards? I'm walking towards it. And there it is. You can't spook it. You got to sneak up on it really slow. If I walk fast, it's going to lose me. Watch. If I walk normal speed, yeah. Oh no, it's still got me. Almost losing me. Almost losing me. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. It's now it's looking straight down because it's almost lost me. Come on, come on, drone. I got to bring the drone over because it's like very slow. It wants to keep such a huge distance away from me. All right, now it's close to that tree. So if I walk on an angle to, in order for it to follow me, I want to make sure it still sees me and sees the tree. Okay. So it didn't crash into the tree. It's coming, it's coming. It's probably going to lose me if I go around the tree, but let's see. I'll just keep watching in the monitor. Has it lost me? Is it going to fly in? Looks like it's getting close to that tree. <laughs> Hopefully it stopped. Well, it's not coming anymore, so I guess it did stop. It's up there. And it's flying backwards now. Oh, and it's got me again. Interesting. That's interesting. Let's try this tree. Go this one. I'm going to walk right around this tree. So I'm going around it, coming out the other side. No, it didn't find me that time, but I was surprised it found me the other time when it lost me. Let me go back and come out the other side. Let's come out. And uh, I'll just stand here. Now, on my screen, it doesn't even say it lost me. It's just there. I'm controlling it now. Oh, the obstacle avoidance is on, so it's a little jerky. It's going through the trees here. <sighs> what are you looking at? It keeps thinking there's something in front of it. There's nothing. Everything's far away. So it's jerking around. It keeps on saying obstacle detected, so it's stuck. When it says obstacle detected, it will not move in the air. It's stuck there. You have to turn it sideways or fly it backwards. There we go. I got to turn this obstacle avoidance off. It's really annoying. What was the other one? Track shots. Oh, that's different. So here's track shots now. Click on me. The drone will take the target as the center and record during surging. Oh, so I think it's going to fly backwards or something. Let's go start. Three, two, one. There we go. It's flying backwards. Good thing I left it lots of space. So it just has droney mode. That's about it. So it's flying up and outwards. It's doing its thing. I don't know if it comes back. Will it come back to my winter wonderland? How far are you going, droney? <laughs> All right, it stopped finally. Uh -huh. I went, uh, it says that went a distance of 48 meters away, and it is coming back. It's just going to follow its same path. 
Flies so much better with the avoidance off. Let's uh, show you the speed modes here. So on the side of the controller, you have uh, normal, like they call it, I don't know, like leisure mode and sport mode. So I'm in leisure right now. All right, here we go. Full speed in leisure mode. There we go. It's not bad. So here's leisure mode coming back at me. There we go. And I just put it up there because there's no obstacle avoidance. Don't want to hit the Jeep. Okay, now I'm going to go in sport mode. I'll put it back this way. So here we go. Full blast in sport mode. I'm going to go past that camera too. This is sport. Little faster. Not massively faster. A little faster. And here we go. Coming back in sport. There we go. All right, next thing to do is uh, check the range on here. I'm just going to fly, see where I am right here? I'm going to fly straight that way back there. And it's a little forest. Take it up over the forest and uh, just see how far it goes. So here we go. Over my head. So I'm going to try to get it to go over that little forest. I'm aiming right at it here. And I just want to see if uh, the signal keeps on going. It says I'm at... 150 or 160 meters. I'm going to take it to about 500 meters and then bring it back. So there we go. It just went over that tiny little forest. I'm out in the farmer's fields in no man's land and I'm coming up to about 500 meters. The signal's really strong, so it's all good that way. Good reception for most things. And I'm just going to turn it around now and I'm going to bring it back. Look at my forest down here. And I'm going to bring it back in sport mode. There we go. Yes, I switched to sport mode and here we go, full speed. On my screen it says the max I'm getting is about 10 meters per second right now in sport mode. Okay, so now I'm flying behind the school. Reception's still good. Yeah, not bad. Reception behind the school is decent. A lot of times the school blocks reception, but it's all good. And now I'm gonna come down to the ice over here. You can see there's ice. And a lot of times when you fly down here, because it's away behind those trees over there, uh, reception is really bad. So let's see, I'll bring it down. The reception would not be that good, but it's still good. Okay, it's the way up there. Let's try some photos. I'm going to hit stop on record and snap some photos. Okay, I have a switch on here. Return to home. I'm going to press it. There we go. Return now. Confirm return to where I am. So you can come to where your phone is or where it took off from. So I'm gonna say, to come back to where you took off from. And let's see where it comes back. It's gonna go up to the height I set it at for return to home, and then it should fly back and land right here. All right, where are you? Oh, it's up top, it's coming down. It comes down very slowly. Now bring the camera down so you can see what it sees. There we go, there I am. There's the landing pad. It's not far off, is it? Look at that, look at that. Oh, what's it, is it gonna, what, what's it gonna land on? And it slid down the side of the embankment. But it landed and it turned itself off. Now you saw in that review, it was a dull, overcast, cold winter day. Aren't all my days like that up here? So drones usually don't perform well in those type of days, especially with poor lighting. This one did okay. So you can take away your own opinion how you thought the 4K 30 frames per second video looked with the sensor and the camera on this drone and the photos as well, given that the lighting was dull. But now you're wondering, okay, so how does it work at night? Is it any good? Can it take anything reasonable, usable that I can use? Well, uh, check this out. Here we have our V-Copter Falcon preparing for takeoff. It does fly very well at night, no issues there. My cell phone is in the top left. That is what I was looking at. And to me, the image looked pretty good but this is the image right here yeah that's what it recorded so a lot of noise in the image does not look good you could not use this for anything 
partially my fault because I had the exposure value cranked up to 1.7 and I'm bringing it down here to one. So even at one, yeah, still lots of noise. It should be at zero. And you're gonna see, even at zero, it's not the greatest, but it does improve itself. So as we go on here, I'm gonna reduce the exposure value and bring it down a few notches and bring it all the way down to zero. And you see as the exposure value is going down, you'll see the noise in the sky reduce and blacks become blacker. This drone is not designed to film at night, not at all. So this is the best you will get filming at night. For some of you, this may be acceptable. For others, probably not the greatest video that you've seen for night flying. Now, this is my favorite part right here. Look at the stop sign. Isn't that cool? Watch that again. The shadow from the V-copter. That looks so cool. Yeah, the V-copter does have a very unique shape and for people who are used to seeing drones when they see the V-copter, they're a little bit confused. As a matter of fact, this guy driving the car coming around the corner, well, his headlights would pick up the V-copter and I wonder what he thought it was. It probably looked a little bit different to him. And here we have the V-copter landing. I did not put on the landing legs and it still lands fine. So after all that, what are my thoughts on this drone? Well, first off, a bonus point is it's very quiet. It's a very quiet drone. So if you need something quiet to fly around and not spook anything, it's pretty good. But talking about spooking things, this drone gets spooked by its own shadow. The obstacle avoidance is terrible on this drone. And I think it might've been because it's not a sunny day. You know, if it's sunny and no snow on the ground, you get better contrast for the obstacle avoidance. Here we have white snow, white sky. Uh, it was getting spooked at every turn and second. And when the obstacle avoidance thinks everything around it is an obstacle, it just doesn't fly. The tracking on here is really good, at least in my tests, it turned out to be pretty good. I like the fact that when it lost me, it could find me again, at least in that one instance. I did put the obstacle avoidance on while tracking in a few cases. And to me, it didn't seem like the obstacle avoidance was working while it was tracking me because it was getting awfully close to a lot of items. So if anybody out there has this drone and you have obstacle avoidance on and it still crashes, it's probably because it doesn't work very well while it's tracking you. Once again, that could have been due to the lighting. I'm not really sure. Other good thing, long flight time on that battery. I had no complaints about the flight time. It was very long. And I did find the penetration at close range, penetration, the signal to the drone, going through objects, trees, buildings at close range was really good. The GPS, uh, you can already guess what I'm gonna say about that. It is terrible. I also found that, you know, for the app, there's limited features on what this can do, especially considering the price of this drone. The camera has very few settings for manual control. You can play with the exposure value like I did, which is very wise to play with on dull days. But other than that, there wasn't too many other controls. There is an option for raw photos, but it was grayed out on my app. So there's something goofy going on there. So I could only take photos in JPEG. It doesn't do a lot now, maybe in the future to do more. Apparently there's eight gigs of memory inside. So if you don't put a micro SD card inside it. It will use the internal memory. And finally, the price of this drone. The price of this drone seems to jump all over the place wherever you check online. I don't think this drone is worth the price they're asking for this drone. I think it's more like a six or $700 drone. I don't think it's a way over a thousand, not for something like this, not with the drone and the controller, not with what it can do currently. Also, the technology in this drone is kind of like the old 2016 DJI Mavic Pro drone, very similar to that. I think they took this technology from that and stuck it in here because it would be very inexpensive to grab 2016 technology and toss it into a drone like this. This case over here is the carry case for the drone. It opens up and the drone fits in there nicely. Uh, obviously, you can only fit the drone in there, not the controller. And when you take the drone out, you do or do not have to put the stand on. This is the stand so that when it lands, it doesn't tip over. Uh, you don't really need for takeoff, but for landing sometimes if the ground is uneven, it's a good idea to have it on. Also with the controller, they do not include a cable that goes from the controller to your phone. They expect that you have one. So I took one here from my FIMI 2022 edition and it works fine. Now, before I tell you why I did not review this drone back in October, how about I show you what comes in the box? So check this out. This is the box that contains your V-copter and this is the box that contains your blast off controller. Your V-copter is housed in a nice carrying case, so when you remove the carrying case, you'll find two pamphlets to get you started. 
Then, one layer down, you'll find all your accessories for your V-Copter. You do receive two spare props, plus a screwdriver and screws, as well as a USB-C cable and your power brick to charge up your battery. Also, the landing legs are included. Opening the V-Copter case, you'll find the V-Copter, and I will say it's very well put together. It feels really good in the hands. Quality build. Sensors on the bottom include an optical flow, as well as two infrared landing sensors. To prepare the V-Copter for takeoff, you just extend the two arms and you will notice that each of the motors has a gimbal on it to rotate the motors so that you can fly forward backwards. Up front you have three cameras. The two up top are fixed in place for obstacle detection and the one at the bottom is your 4K 30 frames per second camera on a 3-axis camera gimbal. Total takeoff weight of the V-Copter is 763 grams. The included battery is a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. You do have a data port on the side to remove your videos and photos off the drone as well your micro SD card slot and bind button are located on the other side. Now we'll take a quick look at the blast off controller. You do receive instructions with the controller. The blast off controller is well designed. Your joysticks are hidden underneath. You can store them there and just put them in place when you're ready to use it. At the front of your controller, you have a charge port and a connection port. In addition, you have two assignable buttons on the rear, as well as two jog dials and a take a video button and a take a photo button. The power button can be found on the right hand side and the speed button can be found on the left hand side. All right, so you waited this long through the video to see why I didn't review this product in October 2021. And let me just say it's because Zero Zero Robotics is a company that's been around for a while. I've been in the hobby since 2013. I know the skeletons in the closet of Zero Zero Robotics, and I'm not going to go into them. I'll just say that they are a company that always overpromises and underdelivers, and they only make products by getting your money in advance. And if they can't deliver or deliver well, eh, sometimes you don't get your money back. And that was the case with this here drone. A lot of people were waiting and waiting and wanted their $100 deposit they put down on this drone and trying to get it back. And a lot of people had difficulty and they had to go to PayPal and put in a complaint to try to get their money back because the company just wasn't giving people their money back. Not to everybody anyways. And that's for the simple reason that the company needed all that money to make this drone. So this drone is nothing new on the market. So let me just tell you the story really quick. Back in December of 2019, December 2019, that long ago, Zero Zero Robotics put out a notice to the world that we're making this drone. And if you give us $100 US, we will ship it to you in two months time. So they promised to ship it in February of the year 2020, two months later. Well, I knew that wasn't gonna happen. That's the old overpromise under deliver. They just want your money. So now they can invest it in other projects they've done and other things. And I knew this thing was gonna be delayed. So in February, Zero Zero Robotics said, nope, COVID's here, COVID's here, we're not shipping it. You know, COVID was in China in December of 2019 when they made the announcement. There was nothing new with COVID. And in order for a company to say in December of 2019 that, yep, if you give us a hundred bucks, we're shipping in February, means that all they needed was the money to have this drone manufactured. In other words, they had the drone finished. They just didn't have it manufactured. And then just so people didn't take their money back, they said, we'll ship it in July of 2020. Nope, never happened. Then September of 2020 came and they said, we'll ship but then, nope, never happened. And then they went silent. And again, yeah, people had difficulty getting their money back. And then for some weird reason, it just showed up an email in September of 2021, said, hey, if you want it, just pay us the difference, which was, I don't know, $5.99 or $4.99. I can't remember now. And uh, we'll ship it to you. So they did. They shipped it to me and I received it in October. And the drone is pretty much 2019 or earlier technology. Now, this also brings me to the next point. There is a firmware upgrade to, I don't really know if it adds anything additional, but it does fix some problems with the drone. But the firmware is not as simple as just attach your phone and it does it automatically. No, you have to download a program and that program has to go on your Windows computer. I don't know if it works with a Mac. The problem with that is this. Look at my screen. Yes, Zero Zero Robotics being as, you know, dark and shady as they are. Even their website says, uh, don't trust it. So with all that said, that's my review. I think if they would have put this drone out way back in February of 2020 as promised, 
we would all be singing a different tune. At least I would. I would be singing a big different tune going, man, this is pretty cool. Because you think back to February 2020, this would have been a pretty good drone. But now we're in 2022. And it's kind of long in the tooth, especially for the price asking. Now, if they reduce the price to like $600 or $700 US for this package, then I think people will buy it and it will be a good drone to get because it is pretty cool. It does kind of look like, I know they call it the Falcon, but to me, it looks like a bat. Like when it's coming at you, it looks like something off the Batman show or Batman symbol, Batman movie, anything. It kind of looks like that. So they should have called it the uh, Zero Zero Robotics V-Copter Bat. And I think it would have been much better. And the final thing I want to say about the drone is that it's very well designed. So I'm going to give props to Zero Zero Robotics for that. Uh, it's designed very well in that when you hold it, it's solid in the hands and everything. It cannot survive a crash, as you've seen on many YouTube videos, reviewers crashed it. They probably did the follow me thing uh, and had the obstacle avoidance on and thought it worked. I don't think so. Anyways, they probably crashed it. And uh, yeah, so it, it doesn't take much of a fall to break the arm. And when the arm is broken, yeah, you're going to have to get it repaired. All right, guys, I hope this video was a negative. I'm just giving you my, my, per it's only mine, Captain Drone, personal thoughts of the company Zero Zero Robotics. If you've had good experiences with them, then yeah, post a comment below because maybe, maybe my information is just so old school right now. I don't know. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I will put links below to places you can buy this drone in case you want to buy it. You know, like I say, it is a little bit pricey. But if you think it's pretty cool just having two motors and the long flight time, then uh, it might be the drone for you. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more cool products on the market, it could be anything in the RC hobby, then uh, make sure you subscribe. All right, catch you in the next video. Bye.